I am Mikael Åkerfeldt, which is the Swedish way to pronounce my name. Uh, and I'm the lead singer and guitar player of Ope. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Lindgren. I play the guitar. Uh, my name is Martin Mendes, and I play bass. My name is Per, and I play keyboards. Uh, my name is Martin, and I play drums in Ope. Now, I'd also like to ask you about a certain person called Eric. Uh, Eric uh, isn't here right now, but <laughs> it's maybe coming out later. In the <laughs> is Eric your, your darker side? Uh, not darker maybe, but as some people look at it that way, but Eric is, uh, is doing stuff that Martin doesn't <laughs> dare to do. <laughs> so Eric's the guy that you lay all the blame at when, uh, yeah. when okay, fair enough. I guess the best thing about being an opeth is that I, I write the songs so I get most money. <laughs> it's a lifelong dream for me to... to uh, to be in a band and to tour the world, I guess, you know, and it's, uh, I love playing music and I love writing songs, but, you know, it's it's really hard to say what's the best thing. It all differs. Sometimes it's it's a curse being the songwriter because everybody expects you to write the, the stuff, you know, and uh, sometimes when you come up with these things that you think is amazing, you know, it's, yeah. it's uh, you feel like, wow, you know, this is fantastic. Well, obviously I'm, I'm in it for the music, but so that's a good thing, obviously. Uh, I like the music, uh, but also we tour a lot, which is a good thing because you get to see a lot of places and uh, that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise, you know, so touring is probably a good part of it. What for you is the, the best part of being an opeth? Uh, it's really hard to say, but I don't know. I really enjoy the whole career. Actually, with Opeth, it's like yeah, it's really but fun. But I don't know. It's like I like to play live. That's my the best thing in the band. The thrill of the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. The best thing is to be with four other guys that enjoy music as much than I do. I think. It's a and are all those four guys in the band? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd check. Just thought I'd check with the whole Eric thing. Yeah, yeah. What for you is uh, the, the best part of being an Opeth? Well, it's um, obviously playing music that you like. You know. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for you, what's going to be the, the hardest part? I suppose touring must take out of you as well, eh? Well, touring is probably the answer to that too, because uh, you're never home. Uh, yeah. Uh, the good thing about that is probably that uh, being home is great, you know. But I never see home, so I, you know, it's it's like uh, it's it's got its good side and bad sides. I guess it's recording. I don't like to record; it's too much stress. But I mean, I love to hear the albums afterwards. But what do you think is so difficult about recording? Is it being in like that one space for a long time, or? I guess it's because we never rehearse, and <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of tough on the studio. I think it's. The same for every guy or girl who's in a touring band is, uh, I guess, the waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging about. Yeah. Airports. Uh, not a favorite place to be, really. No, at all. No. Have you got a favorite airport? Um, not really. No. <laughs> You've never been asked that before, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a strange question. Uh, it's it's fun to tour and everything, but it's it's maybe to not be home very much. But, but, but uh, yeah. it's it's a it's a price that you have to pay. So the times where you think it gets close to not being worth it, or does it never come that close? I, I think it's absolutely worth it, but it's a, it, it's a, it, can, can, it can be hard sometimes, and it's. And it's often the most part is fun. So yeah, it's yeah. A, but is that also then the worst part then of being in the band as well? Like they said, a, a kind of pressure coming in. What's that like? Well, it's become a pressure, you know, because we've been uh, doing this band. I've been in this band for 16 years, you know, put out eight records and all our records that we've ever put out has got great reviews and all this stuff. You know, I try to not think too much about it, but somewhere in the background there is a certain amount of pressure that I want to come up with something I think for, for myself come up with something that I think well this is really good this yeah. uh, is worthy of being called uh, yeah. open I guess yeah. right and with me I have open guys thanks very much for chatting to me I appreciate that well, cheers for coming down right well uh, first thing I want to say obviously uh, Ghost Reveries tour is taking you worldwide 
Uh, it's the third time you've been to to UK in this cycle, yeah. uh, and you obviously the venues have been going up and up. What's that been like? Like stepping up, so it's like kind of two thousand plus. Has I mean, that been like a quite a good a good feeling? What's that been like? Well, it's obviously better to, to play big events every time rather than the opposite. You know, yeah, yeah. If you were going down, it wouldn't be so fun to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make a big difference though? They like two guys like playing the different size arenas, a different kind of gig all round. What do you reckon, Michael? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> but is it like a different kind of feeling like for a smaller gig or does it not matter what size venues you do or well I guess at the end of the day it doesn't really matter we're always going to try and play as good as we can you know yeah. rock it you know but uh, uh, I think it would, because like for instance on the last time we did a US tour we played like big arenas yeah. and that you feel isolated you know uh, so I prefer playing say this size venue uh, as opposed to big arenas yeah and we all like playing small pubs and that kind of stuff because it's it's always it always ends up great you know we played a like a, a mexican restaurant somewhere in like <laughs> little rock or whatever yeah. it was and it was fantastic yeah. they say that's where rock belongs either in the pubs or the stadiums there's like no in between apparently yeah, I guess. but like for, for you guys i mean what you mentioned off to the us and stuff there then what has been like like it's been a worldwide tour. What's been your kind of favourite countries that you've seen? Have you all got like kind of different favourites? What about yourself? Right? Australia, I like Australia. That's uh, how come? What's the difference? Well, it, it's a great climate to start with. You know, it's not yeah. freezing cold. But Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same in Sweden, so yeah, yeah. we're used to. But I think uh, uh, crowds are good and uh, the shows are good. You know, Excellent. it's always a blast. What about yourself, my man? The shows used to be always the same. It's just. Besides the so the show and the waiting and yeah, yeah. stuff, so of course Australia is nice. <laughs> so you go to the beach or whatever. Australia's winning here, hands down. I'm not liking this. What about yourself? <laughs> well, I gotta say, Australia. I spent my honeymoon there. I love Australia. I'm gonna fucking move there. But we we don't mind. I like playing in Stockholm because it's I can go home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not doing great here, UK fans. Let's have a good game. What about yourself, man? London. Uh, my favorite is uh, the UK. <laughs> <laughs> it's best crowd, Just said you best, the UK. <laughs> best venues, best facilities, backstage. Yeah, just we all agree on that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yourself, man? Australia and New Zealand, I think, for me. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent guys. Well obviously this D V D goes on sale in Australia almost yeah. immediately. Yeah. But like so it's been it's been a kind of fantastic job. You, your fans are quite quite dedicated fans. Why do you think that is? Why do you think you've been able to hold on to them through like kind of different album sounds as well? But the fans have kind of stuck with you. Why do you think that is? It's a mouthful that question. We have some it? kind of cool, you know, honesty about what we're doing. I think uh, yeah. people can see that yeah. right yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> do you think there's something that kind of transcends all the albums that have kept people coming back for, for more really. Well, I, I like to think that there's a, a quality to our music, you know, and it, it's taken us a long time and a lot of hard work to, to get where we're at, not like we're big rock stars or anything, but we, it's it's been a definite, you know, uh, step up for us the last couple of years. And it's, it's uh, it all, all comes down to touring, I guess, and also f for uh, the, the record label's been behind us. Yeah. You know, ever since we, our first record level, I guess, you know, and uh, I guess we gained, you know, more and more fans with each new album and uh, I think they stick around for some reason, you know, it's not like a, even though there's been a certain amount of hype around this band, it hasn't affected the fan base in, in that sense that all of a sudden we're big and then we're, yeah. we're nobody cares. It's always been a gradual increase uh, in the amount of fans and, and our success, I guess. So what do you kind of feel like, obviously because you did uh, the cover for of Deep Purple as well uh, with the album, what, what was the idea behind that then? Well I think it was my idea to do the, the, that cover, I, I always loved that song so yeah. much you know, and I think all of us are big fans of Deep Purple and it's a bit, you know, uh, I guess a bit odd to play the Purple song and, and choose that era with uh, David Coverdale. And, yeah. But uh, you know, I love everything with Deep Purple but that song is just one of the most beautiful rock ballads ever written and I don't think we do it justice really you know but uh, we, we still you know wanted to to record that song we recorded it like a couple of years back but yeah. it never ended up on on the record so now we record it again and we've been playing it live and you know I just love it it's also the only song that we know <laughs> well that's a good excuse as well no but like how do you feel your style kind of is now well, at least it's sort of the eighth album uh, through do you feel like um, your sort of style's coming to a kind of forefront of where you want to be? Obviously, you've been there from yourself from the start. And like, mm. do you feel now, like with the kind of uh, time signature changes, the kind of syncopation that you're going for? Do you feel like you're really starting to write? This is actually where we wanted to get to. 
I think we we were pretty confident, like when we did the first album, we yeah. we found our sound or whatever, you know. But we didn't really have a career, you know. It was just a dream that you know we were all, I guess, musicians, but we couldn't uh, we couldn't spend all our time on 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 being a musician because there was no work for us, there was no tours or no gigs or anything. So that's, I think, where we're at now is is ideal for us, and maybe slightly a bit too much as well right. because we're working all the time you know i think um we're one of the hardest working metal bands out there you know we we keep looking at like what what iron maiden did you know for say the power slave tour and it's nothing like what it's we're doing no yeah it's and, so they, and they've got such a reputation as well for like yeah constantly hard touring tour. band and obviously they've been around for a long time but they yeah. did like four shows and that was like four shows in a row and then like two days off or whatever we do i think we did like 16 shows in a row right and we play for a long time we play two hours yeah and yeah sometimes we play three hours you know so, so do you feel like going if you see him oi iron maiden yeah yeah settle down yeah what exactly. the hell do you think you're playing that <laughs> yeah. well guys it's obviously all going Sebastian. fantastically well but obviously any plans in for a new album in 2007 anything planned well, it's started. We're gonna, you know, by the, by Christmas, we we've been out for I think almost 19 months. So yeah. we, we're gonna start with a break, you know, and then just just get our shit together, basically. But you know, there's gonna be an album, right? Eventually, <laughs> just a break just now, then, yeah. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. Well, it's important, you know. I'm quite quite happy. We haven't had any big arguments or fights within the band. We we get along really well, and it's quite amazing for since we've been out for such a long time. But. We definitely need a break, you know. I think all of us need to do something else. He needs to go fishing and he needs to <laughs> whatever, you know. It's like uh, everybody has, you know, their own private lives, which has been put on hold for almost two years now. Yeah. And we need to get, to go back. I have a daughter, you know, and yeah. a wife, and, you know, we all have girlfriends pretty much. With <laughs> <laughs> Inside information there, man. What's going on there? Well, I think you all deserve a break, especially Martin, or so, or so you should say Eric, because he yeah, hit my Eric. microphone. <laughs> hit my microphone before we came in. I was like, ah, what's going on? No, it's so, Eric. But guys, yeah, that was Eric, that one. You blew me on him. <laughs> guys, thank you very much for chatting to us, and good luck. Cheers for that. Thank, thank you. I'm here to see APF. It's going to be fucking great. Yeah. Describe the music for me. Um, nice. Melodic, it's folk influenced, it's absolutely brutal, and it's uh, everything that I love. Any particular uh, track or album that uh, stands out for you? Um, I'd say Black, Blackwater Park, Drapery Falls, Harvest, um, and then Deliverance, obviously, and Ghost Forever is the new one, was not disappointing at all, it was well good, it's wicked. And what are you hoping for tonight? Anything in particular? Um, yeah, I'm just hoping that they're going to uh, sort of really go for it and uh, sort of can't wait to get the gig started, you know, go into the pit. It'll be great. The open, they're just brutal. It's a brutal attack. You just can't wait. You don't know what to expect. It's just like, ah, and death, and death. And it's just like, oh, and it's classical and folk, and it's just like everything mixed together. And when you see them, it's just like, oh. Okay, it's a bit, it's a bit unusual to mix folk and, and metal and all that kind of thing. Explain that. But Opeth do it so well. It's just this combination. They put a bit of this and a bit of that, and they crunch it together. And it's just like, oh. it's just, it's just an onslaught of just carnage. You just can't, you just don't know what to expect with Opeth. It's awesome, just awesome. And what are you hoping for tonight? Anything in particular? Anything off Blackwater Park. Anything. I'm. I just, I just can't wait to see them. I, I'm just going to be in my element. It's going yes. <laughs> I both are amazing, they make me feel emotions, it's amazing. <laughs> I don't know, what else should I say? Well, describe the music, why do they appeal to you? It's like romance and cigarettes, <laughs> that is it. I don't know, and, and sex as well, <laughs> that is open. <laughs> I don't know, they're just, just great, they make me happy. <laughs> Can you tell me where you've come from and why you're here? Uh, actually, I've never seen Opus, so this is my first time, and hails from Kazakhstan. From Kazakhstan, that's a long way to come. Yeah, but I'm, uh, I'm actually like standing here, so like we don't we don't get all those bands over there, so this is like a perfect chance to see them, you know. This is the first time. Hope to see Opus. Really cool shit. Okay. And how, how did you get into them in the first place? Um, well, actually, like I just bought a CD, you know, just by uh, like uh, like my friend. He told me that Opus is like very good progressive death metal, and I like bought it and I got into it. Really, really satisfied. Awesome man. The, well, probably one of the best bands ever. And uh, is there anything, any particular track or album that appeals to you? 
Um, probably uh, the album called Still Life. Uh, I don't think there is a single uh, bad song on this album, and I think this album is simply perfect. Uh, no flaws whatsoever. And what are you hoping to hear tonight most? Uh, probably go, go, um, Ghost Traveries and Still Life and Blackwater Park as well. Uh, my all-time favourite album. I live here in London. Um, I've seen Opeth perhaps four times before. Um, I've got most of their albums. Okay, and how would you describe uh, the music? Uh, it's kind of heavy but clever. They, they combine so many different styles and dynamics. It's really exciting. Okay. Any particular track or album stand out for you? I think the, the track I love the most is Deliverance. It's got kind of so many different movements in it and, um, and, and, and the amazing kind of end bit where I just want to join in and sing. Fuck Opeth! I don't know who they are. I'm here for free. <laughs> it's true. It's as true as it can get. I'm sure they're lovely and all, but fuck Opeth. <laughs> so what made you come down? It was just a free ticket? It was because a friend of mine had a ticket going spare. It, so I'm telling you, it was death metal with melody, so I couldn't really stay away. What are you hoping for? Oh, Deliverance, off the Deliverance album, very good. Uh, what about Reth? Do you know if they can play that? That's a wicked song. My Far Sight album, yeah. Okay. I'm hoping they're going to play some songs off the new album. It's very good. Okay. What appeals to you about the band then? Well, instrumentally wise, they're amazing. Uh, all of their songs are very long and uh, very. The drummer, spot on. My mate Carl, who's not here tonight, sadly, he would have loved to have come. He couldn't afford to play, see the band. <laughs> okay, anybody else in the band that, uh, that appeals to you? You've mentioned the drummer there. Is anybody else? Singer, I think he's amazing, both uh, vocally wise. Um, he can both put on a performance, both singing and uh, shouting wise, which I think is very talented. Do you live in London? No. Oh, okay. yes, I do. For <laughs> Not, not originally. <laughs> okay, so uh, can you tell me why you've come to see the band? What appeals to you about the band? Opeth, because they are fucking good. Good band to see. I've seen them twice before, and I want to see them again. Okay, and uh, can you describe their live performance to anybody has, who hasn't seen them before? Who hasn't seen them? Uh, at times, very chilled out, but then like busts into something very epic. Uh, that's all I can say. It's fucking really good. It's quite unusual to mix metal with kind of acoustic melody and folk and that. It is, it is. Um, it's hard to describe Opeth. Very progressive. They're pushing it forward. Um, and that's why I love them, you know. you got to keep, keep it fresh, you know, and that's what they do. So. Can you tell me why you're here tonight? Oh, you'll tell. To see Opeth and Paradise Lost. Yeah. We came all the way from Greece and Cyprus. Okay. And what, what appeals to you about the band? Jimmy, you do the doggy. Play rock. <laughs> okay. Any particular track that you hope and they'll play? Black Rose Immortal. Yeah, I would like to listen to Black Rose Immortal. It's, a, it's an old song, but uh, I still love it. Okay. Have you come especially from Greece just for this? Yeah, of course. Can I just ask um, why this band appeals to you? Because the dark edge they got, yeah. I suppose, the sort of dark sound to them. The individuality of them. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Don't you... hear a lot of it in England. But it's quite unusual, isn't it, mixing uh, acoustic with metal and mm. folk. Can you, no, can you explain it to well. somebody who doesn't know it? Uh, it it's um, a double-edged sword of sort of hardness and softness together, really. Transitions. Uh, mixing, and, yeah, mixing yeah. the two and making melody out of something Some heavy. metal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Is there any particular track that you're hoping for tonight? Um, well, there's quite a few. Bleak, yeah. Um, well, how many can we go through? All yeah, of them. All Love them all. Yeah. yeah. Any particular uh, member of the band that stands out for you? Well, for lead me. singer. <laughs> His voice just does it for us, yeah. Opeth have been one of my favourite bands for about a good couple of years now. Uh, quite inspirational to many musicians and many bands who are kind of out there. And yeah, basically come down for that reason and they're awesome live so yeah okay what appeals to you about the music uh, the music itself is very progressive it goes through a lot of different time signatures it makes a lot of transitions from like acoustic prog rock to uh, black metal a bit of death metal and um, it's quite experimental with its sound it's not just like another metal band you know and stuff like that so it kind of stands out okay. yeah. any particular track that you're hoping for tonight uh, a particular track that I would like them to play which probably isn't going to happen 
purely it's just like a 20 minute long song. Uh, it's called Black Rose Immortal. It's off their second album, Morning Rise. But uh, it'd be cool to hear it live, I think. But I've never heard it live before. So. Can you tell me uh, why you're here? What appeals to you about the band? Um, I went to um, Download this year and I saw them there and they were amazing. So I've come again um, tonight to see them because they're brilliant. So yeah. Can you describe their music for me? It's oh, it's <laughs> it's <laughs> it's fantastic. What can I say? I just he's amazing live, absolutely amazing. His voice is just it's just fantastic, and um, it's so different. He has um, slow music as well as as heavy stuff, and I like the the transition between the two. It's fantastic. How many times have you seen them? <laughs> and this will be my second time. Out of all the members of the band, which one appeals to you? Don't ask me that question. They all look. No, you can't say that. They do. They all look the same. I I can't answer that question. You love the hair. I just love the hair. The hair. (laughs) What is it about the look? Is there anything about the look in particular? It's just rugged. I like rugged. (laughs) <laughs> rugged men. Rugged <laughs> What a terrible point of view. I'm sorry. Open Floyd and Metal. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I, I've always liked prog music. I won't touch that. Okay. I've always liked prog music and Opeth are the fucking the death metal of Pink Floyd and it's just great. And I fucking love it. And that's why I'm going in there now. I'm not going to wait outside with you guys. I'm cold. No. I want to go see some bands. No. Here we go now. Hello. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can you tell me why you're here? What appeals to you about the band? Sorry, what band's playing? <laughs> I thought this was Fallout Boy. Oh, I'm going to I want to talk about Mike Ackerville. He's just the greatest guitarist in the world. And he's got a... Just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Opeth. They better play Blackwater Park tonight. I'm going to be really disappointed. And he's joking. Cheers, Mike. You're the greatest. And Martin Mendes as well. Greatest bass player in the world. What appeals to you about the band? Uh, the fact that they're fucking amazing. They're probably one of the best prog metal bands I've ever seen. And uh, yeah, and uh, from what I've seen, Mike Hagerville is probably the nicest man in metal ever. That's pretty much it. Okay. Um, <laughs> is there any particular track that you're hoping for tonight? Uh, yeah, but I've not heard them play it, and that's Funeral Portrait. Please, please play it. I know you can't see me now, but you know. He's an Opeth virgin. I'm, I'm not an Opeth virgin. I've seen him a few times. <laughs> and what's the life show like? How would you describe the life show? Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, I've only ever seen them with the most respectable live audience ever. Everyone just sits and watches them in awe because because they fucking rock. And uh, just looking forward to some prog metal tonight. Yeah, that's fantastic. Be nice to be nice to it. Harlequin Forest as well. Harlequin Forest. That'd be a nice one. I like the uh, I like the mixture that they have with the different kinds of sounds and the way that it seamlessly flows from one to the other. It's absolutely awesome. It's like very few bands that you've ever heard before. Yeah, it was a friend of mine first introduced them to me and we were just blown away by just the sound of it. It's kind of the feeling they give you inside. Uh, I don't know, you, you just never, never really... I don't know, it just captures a feeling with inside. What's it like being in the audience? Somebody said there that the people in the audience often just sit and watch in awe. What's it like? I think, to be honest, it, it is a lot like that just because the intensity of the music and, you know, if, if you look into, like, Mike Eckerfeld's face and you can see that, you know, and the way he interacts with the crowd, you can see that he's totally into it as well. It's absolutely awesome. And uh, we're on. Opeth rule! Ah! Opeth! Fucking Opeth! I'm here to see Opeth. And it's going to be in a fucking awesome metal night. That's all I can say. So how, you've seen them more than once. How did that compare tonight? It's better every time. Seriously, it's just it's incredible. You, you think they can't do out, outdo each other, but they do every single time. It's amazing. What did you think of it tonight? Yeah, um, actually, I'm here for Paradise Lost. I went 1,000 miles from Vienna. And yeah, Paradise Lost is the shit. Yeah, it was really good actually. Nice to actually see them finally playing big venues rather than tiny little shoeboxes that they had in the past over here. So. Okay, what was the highlight? What was the, what was the highlight? Uh, well, Demon of the Fall, really. But <laughs> how did it yeah. go? Well, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, how good was it? <laughs> Apple! It doesn't use your scale. Can I have a lighter, please? Lighter. It was fucking amazing. amazing. It's so good. Oh, it's the third time I've seen them now. And they've, be, they've got better every time. I was there for the Shepherd's Bush King, and that was just phenomenal. What was the highlight tonight? Everything. Highlight had to, <laughs> had to be when their first track. When favorite track? When's amazing. 
Yeah, I just, oh, I absolutely love them. They're just, oh, that was just amazing. I just reckon they should have played more stuff from Harlequin, for, uh, from uh, Ghost Reveries, but absolutely amazing. And the highlight for you? The highlight for me was probably Bleak. When yeah. he start when he started singing melodically at the chorus, absolutely genius. Window pane as well. And window, window yeah, pain. window pane. That absolutely was just amazing. Oh, blew me away. So, what was the highlight for you? Highlight for me, Demon of the Fall, probably. I love that song. Vocalist, obviously, great, great charisma. Yeah. Why? Just sort of, he talks to the audience. I've, I've been to very few gigs where he actually listens to what the audience has to say, which is really good. Sort of like the interaction. It was uh, excellent. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, best, one of the best concerts I've ever seen. Okay, and the highlight tonight? Highlight. Um, probably Opeth. Well, definitely Opeth. But uh, I'm a big Paradise Lost fan as well. So, ooh, a bit okay. from there. But Opeth, definitely, yeah. Probably one of the best bands in the 21st century. And any, and any, any particular band member stand out for you? Uh, not really. I mean, the band as a whole really makes makes the music. So, to me, they're probably one of the most intelligent bands in the 21st century. Oh, <laughs> and the highlight for you? Um, fucking Under the Weeping Moon, Night and Sight, well, any old stuff. Like, I fucking love all of it well, anyway. Means, but like, you know what I mean? What makes this band different? Fuck that can't. What? What makes this band different? Um, fuck. <laughs> Uh, just everything, the fucking, oh, I don't know, I can't put that into words, man. Okay, Demon of the Fall, end song, there's no ending of a song which is better than that. It's the best way to end concert ever. No competition. No, dude, fuck that, bro. Blackwater Park. Bleak! Blackwater fucking Park. Bleak! The whole set list. The whole set list. Go for it. What a great set list. You've got old stuff, you've got new stuff, Demon of the Fall. Whatever you want, man. Whatever you. It's got everything. Perfect. Yeah. Couldn't be better, man. Couldn't be better. Exactly. I just want to say it was an honour to be here tonight. Like I found out about this earlier on, like, and uh, I didn't want to miss it because I can't wait for this DVD to come out. And like, I mean, Australia fucking loves Opeth. They came last year and they absolutely tore the place apart, man. And like, I was there to witness that. And uh, like, I'm here for support again. And I just swear to God, like, these guys are just fucking unreal. Um, yeah, no, it was great. It was great. It was fucking best show I've seen in a long time. Venue was fucking unreal too. First time being to the Roundhouse, and yeah, like, what can I say? I'm just fucking, I'm just gobsmacked. Like, it was absolutely fantastic tonight. I have something important to say. Opeth played the Roundhouse. The Roundhouse is a really, really important venue, and I'm really, really impressed that they played. And I want to say thank you, and encourage more bands to play the Roundhouse. And the fact that the Roundhouse actually put Opeth on in the first place is pretty cool. Like, the Roundhouse has a huge history um, of contemporary art and theatre and everything else, and it's very, very cool and unusual that, that they've actually been included in this. Um, yeah, I don't normally make these sort of comments, but I, I felt it was important and I wanted to say something, so there you go. Thank you, Opeth, okay. and you fucking rule. <laughs>
so 